Hello, this is Ruth Ann McKinnon, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to film a, re a requested video. Someone in the comments requested that I do an updated video on um, skin scents, specifically perfume wearing, fragrance wearing in perfume free zones. So just a brief overview, very brief, because if you're here, you kind of already know what you're looking for and what I'm talking about. But a skin scent is something that is something that you wear that you enjoy, but it doesn't project so everyone else can smell it. That's part of it. Another part of it is that um, people who work in perf work or live perhaps even or visit perfume free zones around people who are very sensitive to fragrance, people who are allergic. And the idea is that the scent molecules don't project out to bother other people. <clears throat> the other Part of this is that whatever you're wearing or attempting to wear in a situation like that, it needs to be something that smells natural. In other words, it doesn't smell perfumey, it doesn't smell like flowers, it doesn't smell like perfume, basically. I think you know what I mean. You should smell it just like a clean person, soap, powder, body products, and those things that really don't um, offend. <clears throat> so. I've been a nurse for over 30 years. I'm in my mid fifties and I've worked my entire career in a perfume free zone in hospitals and clinics. And I've been wearing scent that whole time, but I've never ever in all those years had a problem with it. Uh, I've never had anyone complain. And that is even getting really up close with people that I'm doing uh, physical care is for people in clinic that I'm examining and the same. Uh, so anyway, this, this is what I've learned over the years. I'm going to go over the specific scents and my strategies for wearing them and getting away with it so that I'm feeling like I'm getting my needs met and yet I'm not bothering or offending anyone ever. That's my goal. The first category for skin scents I would call plain musks. Okay, so the first, there's yellow musks, white musks, and what I would call natural musks. I don't know, that's my, the way I call them. They smell natural, they smell clean, some lean soapy, some just smell like warm, sun-kissed skin. And the most important thing about this is to wear them on your skin and not so much on your clothing. A lot of what projects to other people is because it's on your clothing. If it's really on your skin and it's a skin scent, it may waft up to your nose, you may get to enjoy it, but you won't have anyone else smelling it. So an example of a plain musk is something like Lovely by Sarah Jessica Parker. Another one is Banana Republic Classic. This is just a clean white musk fragrance. These are often also called white t-shirt fragrances or crisp white linen shirt fragrances. Uh, this Banana Republic Classic is just a perfect example of that. I would probably limit something like this to one or two sprays on skin, not on clothing, and you should be good. Let's see if I've got another example of a white musk is Jovan white musk. This is also a crisp, clean white t-shirt. It has a little bit of florals in it, but Jovan is known for developing beautiful skin scents that also do not project wildly. So again, a couple sprays on skin, under your clothes, and no one will detect it, but you'll get to smell or enjoy and feel fresh and fragranced. Let's see, I've got an, I don't have any other examples. Well, here would be another one. This is Alfred's Sung She. This is another example of a clean white musk that could be worn in a perfume free zone. Again, this is uh, a She, S H I by Alfred Sung. And in my collection, I think that's it that I have for white musks. Oh, uh, no, actually. Sorry about that. I have another one. This is White Musk by The Body Shop. This is a perfume oil. 
Um, I'm going to be covering a lot of perfume oils in this video because oils are essential for skin musks and perfume-free zones. Oils, by their very nature, in the vast majority of cases, do not project very much. So this is another really good example. Skin musk, white musk, I'm sorry, by Body Shop. Lean slightly soapy, but it's mostly just a clean linen, clean white musk with a tiny bit of soapiness. Again, if anyone really gets their nose up on you, or you get really in someone's space, particular in healthcare, they're just going to think you smell clean like soap. They're never going to detect. I've worn this many times and no one's ever said anything about perfume. And if you're working in just an office setting that for some reason has gone perfume free, no one will ever know you're wearing any of these things that I'm presenting today. You'll get away with it. I guarantee it. All right. The next one is yellow musks, which are a little warmer, a little more skin like. They're not that crisp, clean scent. They're more natural, human smelling. The word is animalic. But I mean animalic in the best way, not in the dirty body odor way. If you know musk, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to briefly cover several. Some of the absolute bangers and best ones on the market. We have <clears throat> Skin Musk. This is the oil version and this is the spray version. The oil version is going to be better in a perfume-free zone because this, the spray does have aldehydes. However, I've gotten away with the spray many, many times by simply wearing it on skin, wearing it very judiciously, not overspraying and not wearing on clothes. This even I have kept in my locker at work when I, when I worked in hospitals. I haven't done that for years now. And I would spray it on at the end of a break and I would just kind of spray it under my scrub top and not on my scrubs, and I never had anyone um, detect it. So this is absolutely one of my favorites. Next up, I have Jovan Musk. This is the oil version, <clears throat> this is the spray version, and I'm gonna give you the same caution. I'm just trying to show you the name of it here. I'm sorry about the tags are kind of a mess. I can't, I can't control that, and they're really hard to take off. The oil version, of course, in the same way is going to be easier to get away with on skin. The, the spray has aldehydes. This Jovan is a nice, warm, yellow, sexy musk. However, because of the aldehydes in the spray, I would not wear it on clothing. Unless you can spray it on before you go to work and you have at least 20 minutes for it to calm down. But on skin, it'll be just fine. And uh, this one, again, leans a little more soapy than the Skin Musk, but perfect for perfume-free zones. And it smells fabulous. Next up, I have a couple of other... I'm just going to show you a plethora of other kinds of natural musks that aren't necessarily brand, but are more type. So this is an Egyptian musk that I found that is in a spray form. This can be used on body or linen, and I purchased this on Etsy. Then I have several Zelda fragrances. Zelda is a manufacturer of perfume oils that you can buy wholesale. Zelda, it's Z-E-L-D-A. They have a, their own website. You can also buy them on, um, I've seen them on eBay. I've also purchased them on Amazon. Zelda's brand. Their little stickers look like this. Not all of them are safe for perfume-free zones, however, but I'm going to show you several that are. This one is called Nubian Musk. Nubian Musk is a warm yellow musk with a bit of sandalwood in it, but it still smells just like a natural, clean woman. This one is called African Musk, and it's always known by having this green color. This also just smells like a natural, clean woman. Uh, men can, these are all, even though I'm saying woman, it could also smell like a natural, clean man. These, these musks, these fragrances that I'm covering here are all completely unisex. Here is one that's also very natural. It's called Black Butter. This is like a warm yellow musk, despite the dark color. 
it's mixed with a sandalwood. It's very creamy, very, very natural, very lovely. Uh, if you go easy on it on skin, you'll do just fine. Here is Egyptian musk. Again, just another natural musk scented fragrance. And then I have another black butter. So I have two of those. So those are all options for perfume-free zones. I guarantee if you go easy on these and put them on skin only, you'll do just fine. And again, all you have to do for those is go on eBay, search for Zelda black butter, search for, for Egyptian musk, all kinds of stuff will come up. Same thing is true on Amazon. These things are all very readily available. I've even seen these kinds of oils sold frequently on in displays in natural food stores. Any place that sells there's really into organics and naturals, they'll sell a lot of that sort of thing. But you got to be careful. They'll also have a lot of patchoulis and nag champas and things that smell really loud that you're not going to be able to get away with. So be sure to open up those testers and try them first. Okay, any kind of natural plain musk, that's the first category, and I'm done with that one. Next one are baby powder or powdery scents. So several of these that I no longer have in my collection because I've used them up, I'm just going to list them off by name. Examples are Love's Baby Soft. There is one called Heaven's Scent by Dana. Demeter also puts out a baby powder fragrance, and Avon makes Sweet Honesty. Those all will work. I've tried them all, used them all for years. Any kind of baby perfume. There are a lot of them on the market. Baby Jolie perfume, Jaffra Tender Moments. There's one by Musty called Mustella. I have two examples here of baby perfumes that are cologne. These are eau de colognes, very, very light. And I think any baby powder scented body spray would work as well. However, I just don't have those in my collection that I can show you on camera. So this is Johnson's Powder Mist, Baby Magic Cologne. These are very light. You will easily get away with these. Um, I use these on my grandchildren. It's very good for sensitive skin. These baby perfumes, baby colognes could all be applied and reapplied during the day whenever you want to freshen yourself. Uh, they can be put in spray bottles. These are very safe to even spray on clothes. They're short-lived, however, so don't expect to have an all-day fragrance, but they're great for splashing on. If you've worked in healthcare, you know you often really feel the need for that refreshing because the job is very physical and it's very easy to work up a sweat and to feel gross during the day. And these fragrances are great. Probably not very unisex, but work great for women. All right, so baby powder, baby lotion, baby bath scented things will all work just fine. And that's it for that second. I think that's all I have for that second category. Anything baby powder, baby lotion. Okay, got that. Um, now the next category, category three, is soap and shampoo scented fragrances. So that would include soap, scented perfume oils, bubble bath scented perfume oils, laundry scents, fresh linen and cotton fragrances. So I'm going to show you as much of those as I can that I have in my collection. I'm going to start with laundry scents. The first one I'm going to show you here is the one perfume I have in my fragrance, in my fragrance collection, that smells like laundry. So this is delicious feelings and this is by Gail Heyman all right delicious feelings I always buy this bottle I've gone through several of these bottles this smells kind of like a combination of wonderful um, soap that you use for laundry and dryer sheets and it's fairly long lasting this is a good three to four hours this one if you're careful with it because it smells like laundry it doesn't smell like anything else you can definitely get away with spraying this on your uniform spraying this on your clothes 
goes good on skin. This is also a fabulous um, bed linen spray because <clears throat> it smells like laundry, clean laundry. And so it's perfect if you just want to spray something on your sheets before or your pillow getting into bed at night. Delicious Feelings by Gail Heyman. Highly recommend that one. I've gone through many, many bottles. And I'm going to move on to some perfume oils and different varieties of things just to give you an idea of what you can do and how creative you can be with these perfume oils. So here is one called Squeaky Clean. This is just a generic soap laundry fragrance. Here is one called Tan Lines. This one is supposed to smell like suntan lotion, but it really just smells like a a warm skin right out of the shower. It smells a little soapy. Here is another one. This one is by Valerie's Uncommon Scents. And I purchased these on Etsy. And this one's called Laundromat. So Valerie's Uncommon Scents has a lot of soapy, lotion, natural laundry kind of scents. And they're all good. They're all good. I recommend them all. This is a great Etsy shop, Valerie's Uncommon. So laundromat, smells like a laundromat, like a hot dryers and washing machines, lots of soap, lots of clean laundry. It's a fabulous fragrance, believe it or not. It's not the moldy, gross stuff on the floor. It's the good stuff. And here is another one from Valerie's called Gain. So this smells like Gain laundry soap. This one is called Snuggles. So this one um, literally smells like Snuggles, the dryer sheets or the fabric softener. And then here's another one from Valerie's. It's called Suntan Lotion. So I know that one's a little... Another option is fragrances that smell like lotion. Lotion I kind of lump in with soap. Okay, so Suntan Lotion, as long as it's not strong on the coconut, just smells like lotion. And that one is fine too for perfume free zones. Alrighty, next up I have more perfume oils just to give you, again, ideas for how creative you can be with these. Here is Ivory, Dove, and Kame. So these are the three classic soaps that were back in the day, in the 70s and 80s. And I remember... This isn't what Kame and Dove smell like now. This is what they smelled like back when they were really strong. When you could take a bath with ivory soap or Dove soap. I grew up with Dove, but my grandmother used Kame. And let me tell you, you would bathe with that stuff and you would smell like it for hours. And you really, there's just something so nostalgic and wonderful about these fragrances. And even if someone gets up close, they'll be, oh, wow, you just used a fabulous soap this morning. They really smell great. And here is one that I'm really enjoying. It's called Shampoo, and it's by the Crab Apple Cabin. And this I bought on Etsy. So it just smells like 70 shampoo. It doesn't smell like any. I was hoping it would smell like old school Agree, but it really just smells like a wonderful shampoo. Uh, here's Gain Soap. Here's another Gain. Uh, here's a couple of others. This one's called, this one's by Naughty Button. Again, this is a Etsy store, not Naughty Button. And this one's called Bedtime Bath. And it smells just like baby bath. I just love it. Absolutely love it. And here's Creamy Cocoa Butter. So if you like the smell of cocoa butter, you can, you can put on cocoa butter lotion but then you can back it up and make it last a little longer with a cocoa butter oil. And here's, oh, here's a different one, um, oil of Olay. So there are some that are just simply scented like lotion. And this smells fabulous too. And I love the smell of, of oil of Olay. All right. And so that kind of, is that it for my Laundry, fresh linen, cotton, you, you know as well as I do that there's all kinds of fragrance oils out there called fresh linen. Um, I don't personally have any right now, but any of those would work as well. I've used those in the past. Also, fresh cotton works well. I just, again, don't have any of those. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of others that I have that are just kind of 
miscellaneous now and others that I may have forgotten to include in the other categories, but I'll show you the bottles. These are ones I have in my collection. So if you want to, if you're interested in them, you can search for them on your own. JLo Glow. This is a white musk that kind of smells like hairspray and soap. So if you spray this on clothes and you overspray it, you'll definitely get detected, right? You'll, you'll get busted. But if you wear just a couple sprays on skin, I guarantee you this will just smell like soap. Like you're, you, you showered with ivory that morning. That one works beautifully. Here is a, another one called Most. This is a yellow musk fragrance. Most Woman. And this... I don't remember the... Oh, this one is by Jean Arthez. Jean Arthez Most Woman. This is a Egyptian musk, basically, in a spray. Again, you've got to be careful with this. I would not wear more than one spray, probably just on my neck. But this one works well in a perfume-free zone. This is a Middle Eastern fragrance called Musk Mood. And this is by Latafa. This is also a soapy yellow musk. This is very similar to Jovan. Again, this can be very strong. I would, would wear only one or two sprays, probably on my trunk or chest area before I got dressed. And easily you just smell like nice, clean soap. I have a, another musk fragrance. This is called Carla Musk. This one has a little bit of bergamot in it. But if, when I used to work in, I lived in Texas for a while in San Antonio, and I think this is like the fragrance of San Antonio. I'd say the half of the staff wore this. Even though it was a perfume-free zone, I'm not kidding, everyone wore this. And sometimes people overdid it, but I found that if I only did a couple sprays, no one could detect it. But this is another option. This is from Mexico, and um, I've only been able to purchase this on eBay. But it's very inexpensive, around 15 bucks a bottle. All right, another, I'm, all kinds of these things that I forgot in the original musk. So this is Alicia, Alyssa Ashley musk. This is the original. They also have a white musk I don't have in my collection. This works great for perfume-free zones. Another one, this one is by Paul Sebastian, who I believe is a clothing designer. And this one is called Casual. I don't know if you can see the word casual. This is a very crisp, clean white musk fragrance. It's mixed with florals, but the florals do not overpower. And it's so crisp and clean that you can definitely get away with this easily. Again, don't overdo it on the clothing. Another. This is just a, um, this is White Shoulders by Evian. This is a floral fragrance, but because it's so light and airy and natural smelling, I've gotten away with this many times in perfume-free zones. So White Shoulders by Evian is another one. Another one that I've gotten away with many times is, okay, this one is by Avon. And, oh, you guys, I'm going to forget the name of it. Um, wait, I have another bottle of it. Let me go get it. Nope, I can't find it. So some someone will recognize this and put it in the comments. I apologize. I can't remember the name of it. This is a lot like, it's kind of a green tea fragrance, and it's very white musk. And it's, it's just very ethereal and clean, and I'm sorry I don't remember the name of it. And, okay, another one. This one here is rather new to my collection. This is Perry Ellis Love. This is a floral fragrance, and it's but it's got enough freshness, cleanness, and white musk in it that I've gotten away with this too. Works really well in a perfume-free zone. Not really long-lasting. I probably would not respray this one on a lunch break, but you can definitely use this one in a perfume-free zone. Let's see. I have a couple more... 
This one is Tracy by Ellen Tracy. This smells just like Jergens Lotion, the original Jergens Lotion. It's got a slight bit of cherry in there, white musk. It smells just like a bougie, beautiful, clean lotion, but it's clean enough, clear enough, no problem with uh, Ellen Tracy. Tracy, and there's a lotion that you can get in this fragrance as well, and they go great together, and I've worn them together and had no problems. I've got a couple of shampoo-scented, very shampoo-y fragrances. Oscar de la Renta, a lot of theirs really lean shampoo-y. So I've got three here from Oscar. And all three of these smell like shampoo. They're like different kinds of shampoo. So this one is called... Hmm, Oh, you guys, I really didn't prepare very well for this video, did I? But you know, I only do these videos on the fly. And if I have to really work hard at them, I'll stop doing them because then it'll feel like work. And right now it feels like a hobby that I enjoy. So I think this one is just live in love. Okay. This is a, a slightly citrusy shampoo. This one is called Live in Love New York. This is a slightly rosy shampoo, but a shampoo nonetheless. Easy, easy to get away with. This one is Live and Love, just plain Live and Love. I'm not, so this one is so, in, uh, anyway, I don't remember what this one's called, but this one's called Live and Love. This smells like another just clean shampoo. This one's a little rosy, This, but they're all shampoo-y. All three of these are. And again, just go easy on the sprayer. I keep saying that, but it's a lesson that you'll learn. If you ever make that mistake and someone says, wow, you smell like perfume, you'll know just don't wear so much and you'll be fine. And I have one last one in my collection that I've gotten away with many times, and this is Arpege. And the reason why this works is because it smells like powder. It smells like a bougie body powder. So if you... Go on to Amazon and you search for body powder and you can still buy them. They used to be really, really common. Every lady on their dresser in the 60s and 70s had a body powder, a comp compressed body powder, and with a big powder puff and you put it on to feel fresh after a bath. Or you apply when you're feeling sweaty and you need to be refreshed. That kind of powder always have some kind of scent and perfume in it. This Arpege smells like a, just like that, the old school body powders. Another thing you can do is wear body powders. They've gotten a really, really bad rap because of the connection, the so-called connection with ovarian cancer, uterine cancer. To my knowledge, that's never actually been proven. But of course, because it is so well advertised, the risk as long as you're not wearing those powders in your underwear area, in your bikini area, you don't have to worry about it. That's really one of the places that women always wore those powders. And I don't need to get into why that is. I'm sure you understand why, but you can easily apply them under the arms. I used to shake baby powder into my bra, uh, apply them to the chest area, the skin, anywhere you want to feel refreshed. And that's perfectly safe to do. There's absolutely no reason not to do that. So powders is another way to get away with fragrance in a perfume-free zone and to, and to feel fresh. The idea is you're, you have to live in an area and you don't want to bother other people, but you can still meet your needs. So the reason for this video is to help you think of different ways to make that work. So I'm sorry that this was so disorganized, but I still covered all the fragrances that I wanted to. If you have others that work really well, please put those in the comments so that we can help other viewers of this video. And if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to leave them down below. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.